Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Direct Selling Executives Forum, Open Forum, uh, with Mark Bearderwine and walking through strategies from 25 plus years at Amway. Now, before we jump into our topic today, for those of you that are new to the DSEF, Direct Selling Executives Forum has been around for three years, uh, started it three years ago um, in the space. It's a members only, invite only community. It's free. It's just executives inviting executives. Uh, we have everyone from uh, Stuart uh, McMillan, Ron and Monad, from uh, Chris Cicinelli, who spoke just uh, two months ago, who founded Pure Romance, and many, many other executives um, in between. There's about 400 of you between the email newsletter and the LinkedIn group and the Facebook group um, that participate. If you haven't yet joined the LinkedIn group or the Facebook group, they're free. Uh, you just have to go there and apply. They may ask you a few questions about your role um, and you can get in. If you go to directsellingexecutiveforum.com, it'll forward you to the LinkedIn group and you'll be able to participate. So um, before we get started uh, today, I want to go ahead and just walk through um, Mark, meeting uh, Mark Beardwine and inviting him to be uh, here today. It was I just felt honored and blessed uh, that Mark was uh, open to being on the call and sharing some of his thoughts. Mark has spent 25 plus years at the Big A. That's right. Amway, right? The company everyone says, yep, they're the biggest um, in direct sales and have been forever. Um, and what's unique about uh, Mark's experience team and what I've enjoyed ab about this time is M Mark in his career, as many of you in your careers, uh, was in a lot of different roles over his time at Amway and got the opportunity um, both as a, an American to live abroad for decades and served in running both the European markets and the Asian markets, something that I know many of you on the list have interest in. I'm just looking at all you coming on the line. We have we have CEOs of party plan companies and MLM companies and direct selling companies on the line today. And we have other executives as well. Uh, welcome, gang. It's good to have you here on the line. And so with that, I was very excited um, to have uh, Mark here and for him to share um, just today with each and every single one of you. So with that, I want to go ahead and welcome Mark to the call. Mark, thanks for being here today. Pleasure's mine. Pleasure's mine. I'm humbled when I'm hearing about all the people who are here online, Ben. So, uh, yeah, it'll be. Uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to the to the chat. Well, this is a fun chat too, because many times on the DSEF Open Forum, we'll have you know two, three, four different executives on one topic, and they'll be from very different backgrounds. We'll be going back and forth on, oh, how did you see it over there? And that's how it is. And today, I wanted to have this more be. It's it's kind of a calmer call, right? There's not a lot of frantic energy of like different executives trying to get their opinion in edgewise. It's just us sitting here with Mark. And I like that. It's it's, it's almost as if it's Friday, right? End of the week. And we, we're just getting an opportunity to just ask some questions to, you know, Mark, who's been in the space a really long time. And, well, and I'll just go ahead and open up is, you know, often we've talked about some of the challenges that executives uh, who want growth and quick wins run into. And it's challenging to know what to pick long-term, short-term. And so one of the questions I wanted to bring today is a trap that I see happening often, right? Is this idea of executives getting tunnel vision on short-term needs and never getting to the long-term things they need to do. And what's been your experience, Mark, and what have you seen? Uh, so so thanks, Ben. Maybe, maybe just before we start, just to for the audience and 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 just for as I've been you know kind of contemplating some of these questions, these are my experiences and my opinions, and I completely respect mm -hmm. the fact that you know the viewers are going to have their own, their own experiences, and that's what makes our our industry so interesting is because uh, it truly can be that way, and uh, uh, I just I just like to say that I don't want to offend any, any anybody uh, you know if I if I if I make you know certain position statements or, or whatever maybe a couple of different ways to take your uh, question. Um, first of all, um, you know, corporate demand on the markets, right, for double, double digit growth, especially when markets are young and, uh, and, 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 and growing and pressure uh, through bonus systems or whatever, uh, yeah, we want double digit growth. And, and, and in fact, especially when markets are young, young leaders, representatives in the marketplace, they need time to mature. They need time to grow up. They are responsible suddenly coming from other occupations, coming into direct selling for the first time, um, maybe having hundreds or even thousands of people they're suddenly responsible for because they're going through this growth phase. 
and they're just not up to it yet. They've got the right stuff, but maybe they haven't matured enough to get into that role yet. And, and the response, these people are looking for, uh, they're looking for direction. They're looking for uh, success, right? Uh, they're, they're looking for ideas and so on. And, and I think that we underestimate that the, 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 the needs that those leaders have uh, to, be, to be supported along the way. And the result is gonna be, you know, a business that's gonna recoil on you and, and, and maybe losing really, really good people because, um, because things were not put in place in, in the first place. Growth is growth that is based on emotion and excitement, but lacking the fundamentals, not having those fundamentals in place, even if the business is just starting, taking the time to invest in training, rules, support materials, new distributor programs, new employee training programs, you name it, those basics need to be in place so that the people that have the right DNA for this business aren't lost because they just were not up to the, to the, to the role that they're, that they're being, being, being placed in. Um, even, even inexperienced local management can contribute to the, to the problem. And, and you know, literally hyper growth is more often than not followed by hyper decline. And this do just doesn't have to be. It's really interesting. I'll pause for a second, Mark, about what you're sharing. Last month, our topic was how to handle unprecedented growth. Some of the people who are here on the line and who spoke even last month experienced that crazy hyper growth. And then this year are in this in the spot saying, how do we keep these people? Um, just just truthfully, they they raw in a raw answer in a private conversation, that would be the conversation. Because because you're right, maybe they didn't put together a solid onboarding process and leader Julia's process duplicated over here in these states and leader Tommy's process duplicated over here in this country. And it's kind of feeling splintered now. And yep. so when you when you didn't take the time to put those long-term things into action like you should have and you hit some super growth, like how do you, with all the egos and all the emotion, like, I mean, and, and I mean, Emily, you've had this with diamonds for years where we're the diamond, it's our way, you know, it's, I mean, you're known for that of let them run their own culture on their team. How, when you do have to act from the corporate end to own onboarding, just as an example, like what's your favorite way to institute that change that's not just, you know, destroying the leaders um, in that time? Because that's always the fear, right? If we come in at corporate and do anything, and the leader's not going to like us anymore. What have you found any winning ways to implement change you know, once once you, know, you missed one it? Of, one of the, one yeah. of the things. I, I, first of all, I want to be careful. I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. You know, dropping any uh, uh, company names uh, sure. at all. I just want to respect sure. the fact that you know we're talking neutrally between you know with experiences. And I just yeah. want to you know keep things you know parked parked over there. But. You know, sure, because just what, to show what, that officially with everyone, we mentioned the word name Amway, and Mark's no longer at Amway, he's retired from Amway. So that's important. I should note that. Yep. Yep. So, so we won't say, so, share any company names anymore. I'll just note that. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and, and for the Bay, you know, and, and a number of the people on the, on, the, on the call today know that we also have our own direct selling consulting mm -hmm. uh, uh, company mm -hmm. now that's been up uh, and running now for nearly a year by the mm -hmm. end and, and that's why, you know, so. We have relationships with a number of other different uh, uh, companies and whatnot. So, yep. um, but but one of the things that we saw after after witnessing, you know, that that those 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 market openings that were that were that were done that way um, many many years ago, we saw an extremely successful uh, program um, that was that was done in Russia, where the Russian growth program was put together, where it was an amazing holistic approach that was put together by multifunctional teams with people from the market, from Europe, from headquarters, all coming together saying, we're gonna start this market the right way. And we're gonna put these things in place, think about programs, training, you name it and say, we're gonna launch the right way. And, uh, and it was an amazingly successful market for a very long time, experienced hyper growth, and then went through a long, long phase of, of mature growth um, and did not experience that hyper decline. And so, as I said, it's something that happens. It doesn't have to, have to, have to happen. And, you know, kind of, kind of building on that, one, one of the other um, things that I thought of, you know, to, to answer the, the original question about this tunnel vision, and it's very related to this, very, very common mistake, rapid expansion into multiple markets, new markets, right? With what we call a cookie cutter approach, right? Saying, 
in order to do it fast, we're not going to think about this. Uh, we're going to put in all the functions into these structures um, uh, the way it's always been. We're going to have a marketing manager, a sales manager, distribution manager, uh, maybe legal HR, general management, distribution manager, put everybody in place, cookie cutter, launch, go. When in fact, uh, you know, when you think about the question on, 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 on tunnel vision um, or, or short-term thinking, not taking, taking the time to take a step back, think about how could we maybe be five years from now with multiple markets and avoid what every good leader does. He sees an opportunity. We have five markets or 10 or 20, and we are lacking the sharing of, of functional resources where maybe they could be. So what happens if you, you have to restructure, you have to consolidate, and you have to go through the cost and the pain of losing good people, investing into something that actually could be done in many cases from the onset, if you take a step back and say, what could we look like five years from now? And what we're seeing, especially with some of the, com the, the companies that we're starting to have discussions with from the consulting side of things, is that it's difficult to get employees who have not yet faced the challenges of restructuring to think long-term and avoid all this pain and, 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 and suffering and, and cost that, that, that goes along with it. So I just wanted, I wanted to make sure I get yeah. that, that thought in because these were the two yeah. thoughts for, for that question. It's a in in that that is a very very uh, solid thought. There's actually an example that I think is healthy for all of us. It's from the '90s, so we could pick on it with a company name just because it's kind of a public one um, that I I would would share with that. And then let's go back to another question, um, but would be like Mary Kay in 1990 in America at least. Um, that's back to where they had separate systems per state in America. Just so just for the Americans that are on the line, just imagine that. It, how we can all laugh at that today and say, no, no one would have separate shipping systems and commission tracking engines and customer service teams per state today. No, we want to do that. And yet that's kind of in Europe, that's how some of the American companies here on the line expand. I mean, we make that mistake of, if, of not sharing resources the way we could. I do want to go back to one, one part of that. Um, Mark, I thank you for sharing the story about Russia and how it went well, but have you found of like, yeah, with just with the wisdom of all the hard times, I think it's the hard times we all learn from. When you don't do it right, when you miss the long-term vision and you were thinking short-term and you screwed up, like what have you found is the, the best way to get out of that or to, to correct? Or is it just going through the pain of making the decision and correcting once you know you've not made the right uh, choice? You know, yeah. it, 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 I, I, I think I, I mentioned it and it, it, it means getting the basics right and, mm -hmm. and, and, and doing things clearly in partnership, not just stated partnership, but in true partnership and getting proper input from the people in the field who are in the trenches. We are, when we're in, we're, when we're in affiliates, we're in the trenches, of course, right? But we're still not out there every single day, literally you know, ringing doorbells, seeing people in their living room and so on and so forth. Um, and and getting, getting the basics right and, and having, having those things in place and the training programs and things, and it's, it, it's effort, right? It's effort and it's getting the basics. And we have seen many, many examples of markets that have gone through the cycle, right? Hyper growth, hyper decline, then a bit of a valley that could be a year or two. And then slowly when those things are put in place the right way, that then they grow back to a real level of solid and mature market uh, volume size, right? And then you have a healthy business. Thank you. You know, a, a question we talked about earlier at a different time uh, before the call was this idea that, you know, following distributor behavior is not an expansion strategy. And I know you touched on some of those pieces as we've been going back and forth, but but tell me more. You've, you've said that in other meetings we've had like, with working together. What do you mean when yeah. you say following distributor behavior is yeah. not a real expansion strategy? Yeah, and, and, and again, you know, we're, we're seeing this in, 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 from so many different perspectives. So I'm a big believer. I'm going to set this up a little bit. I'm a big believer in knowing your role, right? And simply said, and, and this is a simplification, I know, but distributors sell products and the company provides the infrastructure and the support to maximize the distributor success. Okay, and I, I, again, and it's simplified, but the, the, the growth cannot be with horse blinders on. That's not part of the definition. 
And you know, one example, make the point, everybody knows we have, we have cross-border activity and un unopened markets. You know, this is a common topic across our industry. Um, more often than not, this is tolerated before it's addressed or stopped, right? Uh, it's just tolerated. Why? 17 reasons why. Why is it not? Probably not too many really good reasons why it's not addressed. Yeah. Another common issue would be pushing volume to achieve qualification, uh, the, next, the next level. Basic things in our industry, right? We all face these things, but these activities create not only uh, a, a reputation and, and, and legal issues for the, the company involved, but they also, you know, at the time, but they, perhaps even more importantly, they're going to create, the, it, 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 it's going to erode the credibility of the company management for not ensuring a level playing field and an equal opportunity and recognition and benefit for all of those who are out there. And, and you know, one, uh, one will always pay for looking the other way. There will always be a price to pay, um, especially younger executives riding the growth wave, um, neglect maybe to recognize that, and this is really important, the, that irrespective of your rules of conduct, your policies or your contractual relationship, the activities of the field representatives in the eyes of the authorities is in fact condoned activity of the company and the company is held responsible whether your policies and, 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 and processes and rules are in place or not. And the solution is, is super simple. Own your market expansion strategy, apply the rules and policies according to a fair and understood process. It, you know, you just hit on, everyone got to hear it. It's, it's the Ben Horowitz book, right? Culture is not what you say, it's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but you hear that from Mark. I wanted you guys to hear that, right? Mark's saying the same thing that, you know, top investors would say. Your culture is not what you say it is. It's what you do. And what you just heard from Mark is it's what you allow. Yep. Like, hear that, everybody. That's, that's some, that's, should, it should kind of be chilling to you. You should feel that a little bit and, and just sit in that for a second. And man, what am I allowing? that I just know isn't even up to my standards or my core values in my organization. You might, you, might not want to admit, you might not want to admit it, but if yeah. if it's tolerated and if you know about it, A, you could be held responsible if your names are on the books, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, with, with signature authority and whatnot, but also it reflects exactly where your value set is, truly. And you know, you might not want to hear that, but if you're closing your eye because the sales are more important right now than doing the right thing for the long-term benefit of everybody and the business and protecting the business, then there's maybe a maybe 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 a reset is necessary for 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 for, for analyzing the value sets, right? You know, one thing you talked about is is the expectations. Real quick, I want to kind of turn for a second for one thing you said, uh, Mark, the expectations of like corporate's role in the fields. And this is something that I've seen change just a lot in the last few years. I remember when I joined my first direct sales company, you know, I got to do some math here. So it would have been, oh my gosh, so 15 and a half years ago, officially joined, but I was going to events 17 years ago, I was under 18, so couldn't legally joined but the expectation there was that you know you're gonna it was very similar to the culture you came from you as the promoter are gonna learn everything you're gonna learn all the ways to share personally all by yourself you're gonna learn how to do the presentation all by yourself you're gonna learn how to enroll people all by yourself you're gonna learn how to do the training after you enroll them on how to duplicate them and lead them to their success all by yourself and i've seen expectations change a lot over the last 10 years on the vendor side to where corporate is way more involved today in what they provide to the field and much less is expected of the field. I see you nodding your head because what I, I'm seeing more than ever is that like, it's not about the leader bringing their system to the company. And I hope we all hear this and most people are already on this page on the call, but I just want to share it because some aren't, but co corporate needs to do more than just ship out product on time and make sure the merchant accounts stay good and they pay commissions on time. It, you, you, you need to step into, you know, ex modeling the behavior you want people to follow in social media, modeling the behavior you want people to do when they're reaching out and texting and engaging friends on a messaging tool or texting. 
you have to be modeling the behavior of how to onboard someone and how to train someone and not expect people to come up with their own onboarding process. I hope, hope you're hearing all those things because it's not about finding some leader that does that. If you, if you, like you think about your children, I think there's a lot of parents on the line. I got kids, Mark's got kids. When do you get really frustrated with your kids? It's usually when you expect them to be something they're not and then you're disappointed. And it's the same thing leading a volunteer army in direct sales is you get really frustrated with your field reps when you expect them to be something they're not. And so if we can uh, lower expectations in some senses to say, uh, these people have relationships, trusted relationships, and we're going to help them with all these technical things. They're not a professional salesperson. You know, they're just a fan of our products that we're willing to share it to have some extra income for their family. And they, maybe they'll become a professional salesperson over time. Maybe they'll gain more skills over time. But in the beginning, they're just someone with trusted relationships that wants to earn extra income because they're a fan. If you can lower expectations of that part and do a little bit more of that heavy lifting on corporate side, I think you'll be a happier executive. I think you'll have the behaviors that you wanted actually out there in the field more, and you'll have more success in those not less educated, less tenured fans that decide to promote you. And those small successes feel like a better win long term. That's just my perspective. Would you share any any thoughts of that, Mark? Yeah. So, yeah. so when now, typically, do you start to have a relationship such that you can actually take influence. It's usually in larger situations, it's usually the first time somebody achieves a particular qualification level, whatever that might be, the first leadership level, significant leadership level, uh, because you don't have time to spend every, you, you can't spend time with every new app that's that 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 that, that every new distributor that, that that's that comes into the business when you know, it's growing. So so you default by saying, okay, I'm going to meet these people at a leadership seminar, for example, or whatever the names are of of, of, the, of these events where these leaders come together, and and that's where those first discussions start to take place, and those and 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 from stage you're delivering messages, but. A lot of times people have been in the business three, four, five years before they participate. So, so where the, the, the sole influencer in that person's development up until then is their upline and whatever they represent and however they are doing things. And I'm generalizing, but it, it's probably 99% of the time it's true. Yeah. And, and these, it comes back to what I, what I, what I, what I said before. If the basics are in place, if you've got new distributor training programs and so on, then you can start to influence the correct behaviors that the company is looking for or trying to teach the values of the company, um, making sure people understand exactly what it is that the business that we're in and why and what we're doing and so on and so forth. Those things can be addressed early on and those relationships can be built early on. Um, but again, you know, it's a, it's a matter of, 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 of investing in, in those relationships earlier than they are today because they usually don't start until you get here. And, and just hear that, everybody, what Mark said. So it's your responsibility at corporate to model what you expect them to do. It's not that you recruited some good field leader and they're going to model it. You need to model it as the basics, what Mark keeps talking about, so that they can then emulate your culture and either be a fit or not be a fit in your culture of your company. And that has to be okay. That's good. That's really good. You know, I, I want to ask if they're moving into our next question. Um, you talked about opening new markets and most companies really struggle at opening <laughs> new markets. I mean, if we're honest on this line, this is where all the horror stories of just ungodly amounts of cash is wasted um, many, many times on bad country launches, just all sorts of stuff. What, what would be some of your guidelines now that you've, you know, retired from the corporate role and you're in a consulting capacity these days, what, what would you say to the folks here saying, this is my checkbox of how to expand into new markets well? Yeah, yeah so so our, our dissect team has literally written a, a book on this. I mean, literally, we have a, we yeah. have a playbook for helping people in, in, in new markets that would like our help. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm mean, just to mention a, a, couple of, a couple of things here. Um, organi organizations that, that, that we've seen often believe that new market opening is a responsibility of sales and or marketing, right? Depending on how things are structured. And in fact, it's the responsibility of the entire company and everybody, every function needs to be involved from the start. And you need an integrated and thoughtful project management 
from the start. And also believing that employees can do the job in addition to their normal day job is putting the entire uh, strategy at risk, right? You just, you can't stretch people that far. Really strongly advise, create a new market team to focus resources correctly. Um, second critical factor is, is local support. Finding that right person uh, in the new market that you can trust and has direct selling experience to help you get the basics in place that are necessary. Really, really hard for it sometimes, but it's essential to the launch uh, to be as fish, efficient as possible. And, and, and as I mentioned before uh, at the, in, on the first question, um, avoid the trap of expanding structurally with a cookie cutter approach. You know, I'm not gonna, not gonna, not gonna repeat it. All new functions don't have to be. Um, and, and seeing, you know, the new, I don't, I hate to say it this way, but seeing the new virtual normal that we're involved in for the yeah. past 12 months proves that that, 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 that point can be, can, can be, can be addressed in a, in a different structure can be addressed in a different way. Yeah. So local support and getting a team together, uh, the right way to, to, to focus on expanding and then do the, then get the, get the basics right then after that. That's it's, it's good stuff. It's a lot of knowing your people. I mean, at the end of the day, your entire business is about your people. It's your executive leaders on your team here and your own staff and the people in the field. So you're hearing that it takes a lot of wisdom to know what your people's capacity is, what is and what their giftedness is. It's kind of like the Peter principle. Like you don't want to promote people to their level of incompetence. So you you know you gotta you, you gotta know that because you you are risking a lot of opening other markets. I mean we've. I mean, we've all seen some of the horror stories of companies opening England wrong or Germany wrong from America. And, you know, it's like, that's not how they even do business here and just wasting a lot and not getting a chance to do it right later, you know, is, is the challenge. You know, if you do it wrong, it's, it's hard to come back around to that. Um, Mark, I've heard you say that smaller organizations just at times don't share the urgency or professionalism or follow-up that's necessary to be a long-term successful player. What do you mean by that statement and what examples could we learn from? Because, yeah, I mean, there's people on this line who would consider themselves the smaller organization and there's people who are the large organization on the line. So you know, walk us through that thought. Let me, let me take a couple, of, a couple of quick examples and I'll, and I'll take, take the, sure. the topic up a, up a level. Um, specifically, you know, what have I seen? Poaching leaders from other companies with their organization. Now that's a growth strategy, right? Not. Um, copy and pasting rules of conduct from the lead market without reviewing them for the new market. And just assuming that they're gonna apply, you know, in that market equally. Just do a translation from somebody who I think is a translator and then we're good to go. Or improper or even non-existent, you know, product registration, even company registration, all these kinds of things. You know, these things make headaches for all of us because the reputation that then follows from those unfortunate situations is something that we all have to deal with. Um, and, and today I have to say, I respect today even more the level of professionalism in the organization that I was employed with for so many years. Speed, accountability, defined roles, project management, prioritization, follow-up, you name it. Professionalism starts with us. And it reflects the attitude of the company. Um, you know, we talked about it just a couple of minutes ago. A, a, a certain culture, once it's established, it's there to stay. And I, I really don't know many strategies that have been meaningfully changed, that, that have meaningfully changed an established culture, right? Mm -hmm. well, it's, it's, you can put in new strategies. The culture is always going to survive. I will always bet on a culture being the reason for success over a new initiative or a strategy. So, you know, get that level of professionalism established from the top and protect your value set uh, in doing so. I think you all just heard it again. What, your culture is what you do, not what you say. So remember that gang. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more. I sadly seen those things. You know, I, you know, you see stuff where like a client loses a merchant account because they lied to the bank and didn't tell them what, sick code they were and you sit here and say you did what in opening that country like you didn't let the bank know you were an mlm you have seen all of this stuff and and you sit here and say that's just people rushing right you tried to save two points on what and now you can't process visa like 
I've seen that stuff in multinational companies, even yeah. in the space. And sadly, yeah, some some people make those kinds of mistakes. And you sit here and say, like, you didn't need to do that. You just lost your credibility as a person of authority. You know, our organizations are pretty religious when we think about them at the end of the day. We put leaders on pedestals and and put high respect uh, towards them. And and when you show you can show your incompetence easily when you're rushing in the wrong places. Absolutely. Yeah. As, as we wrap up, one of my favorite questions, Mark, and really grateful for your time today, um, is that if you could go back, and this is one of my favorite ones, if you go back five years and tell yourself just one thing that you know now, what insight would you share with yourself? Yeah. One. Just, yeah, just one insight. <laughs> Be, besides buy Bitcoin, right? Or whatever you would tell yourself from five years ago, okay? Or, or whatever whatever investment thing you would have told yourself, right? What would be one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So if, 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 if a company or is, is, is striving to be a global organization, mm -hmm. you're an executive leader in that organization, is to create a system of true diverse cultural input from the onset when things and strategies are being developed, creating global strategies from a single market cultural mindset, you're gonna struggle, right? And, and expanding to become an international business with a limited cultural perspective, be it US, European, Eastern European, Asia, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Inherently, you're going to default by, by trying to apply that culture that you're coming from onto others. And that's a tough one. And I personally could have been a much more effective leader uh, had I had I looked at different cultures and said, uh, try less to understand the question I'm being asked itself in in itself. Try and understand the question less and understand more what the question was trying to achieve. Context. Okay. Uh, in Japan, they never asked questions in the moment. Mm -hmm. so it was a process and we had to find out later on through different channels or going out to, uh, for, for dinner together or, or, or getting a, a local uh, leader who was connected to then give that feedback in, in a particular way. Other markets, other cultures, the questions were being asked in order to put up a blockade because we didn't want this initiative to come to us. Um, what, I, what, I, what I painfully, but then later beautifully learned in Thailand was that they were drilling me with questions about a particular initiative we were trying to implement because they wanted to execute with precision. And I was hmm. taken the wrong way. And had I hmm. thought more about what the question was trying to achieve and not just answer the question, I think I could have been a better leader earlier. And that is, that is such a good reminder. I, I, we all show up every day with the glasses we have on. You know, we, we see the world the way we see it. And man, when you start working around the globe, there are so many different perspectives and contexts of where those words are coming from that man we we can all we can all hear that and learn from that yeah. man well mark mark i just want to say thank you for being here today i want to go, I want, go ahead I have to, I have to pay respect to the bavarian yeah. this is a little bit of fun but it's okay. friday and it's 7 30 and this is our culture and so when this is over i'm going to enjoy this vice beer Oh, fantastic. All right. So yeah, I, man, last time I was in Frankfurt, I got to try the local Hefeweizen. So that was, that was something. Well, enjoy. And thank you so much, everybody, for uh, being here today. And thank you for sharing your thoughts uh, and for even contributing some of the folks who have contributed to questions in the past. Uh, thank you for posting those here. Mark, before we go, most of the executives that come to these calls are active executives running a direct sales call in the moment. Your, your situation is just a bit different. You had just recently uh, retired and over the last few years have started to run a consultancy company. So I do want to take a moment, let people know where, where can they find you and your services as they want to connect with you in the future. Um, yeah. yeah, follow us on LinkedIn. Go to Dissect uh, uh, on LinkedIn, D-I-S-S-E-C-T. -S -S um, 
send an email to markb at dissect.info. Um, love to find, just Google my Google my last name. You'll, you'll it'll, it'll pop up. Uh, Biter Whedon is such a, uh, a seldom found last name uh, will pop up somewhere. But we'd 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 love to engage in a in a conversation with anybody. Just if it's just networking or exchanging ideas or if there's something we can help with. Um, we've got a total of 16 um, executives with over 250 years of direct selling executive experience from every single function of the business who are part of our uh, consulting team with Dissect. And um, we're having a ball uh, taking all of our experience and helping out uh, younger, smaller companies especially, but it doesn't matter uh, age or size. Um, uh, we've, got a, we've got an awful lot of experience to offer. So uh, thanks for the opportunity to put that little plug in there. Appreciate it, Ben. You got it. And I know that we don't we don't usually use the open forums to sell products or pitch or promote, but with all this work, it's it's just it's just great to know that there's that kind of information available and those kind of people are available as 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 many of these executives on the line move through just different challenges and different growths on their life. I want to thank you everybody for being here today, wishing you all the absolute best. Have an have an amazing uh, week and do great things. We'll see you soon. Bye for Thanks, now. Ben. Appreciate thank you. you. Appreciate you.